What's up everybody? Brett here, and we are back today playing some more Spell Sword Cards Dungeon Top. Alright, so I played a round of this in my free time, and I got pretty dang far. I played as the Warrior Class, same Guardians of the Helm, and I made it into the third floor. I got pretty deep into it, and I lost to a boss whose mechanics I guess I just didn't quite understand, and he just crushed me. He had, I don't even want to go into it. It was, it was kind of a really lame, sort of unfair uh, series of moves that they were able to do that I wasn't able to counter at all. I just had no way to counter it. I had an awesome deck, though. Uh, really powerful upgraded stuff. I could drop, like, five guys on turn one. And I was just crushing people until I got to this one boss. And I just didn't give them enough respect. But I think I said in the last one that we would try the new, uh, the new Allegiance. And we would go for the Hand of Karim. It's a difficult combo-oriented oriented allegiance that sacrificed its own minions to gain an advantage. I did a dry run with these guys. I didn't get super far, but that's because I ran into like an elite right off the bat. And I got crushed. Uh, but I think I get generally what you're trying to do. You have one character here, and I think it's these dudes, the Worm Food Legionaries. And they're exactly what they sound like. Um, whenever they die, which is last word... Um, they trigger, they summon a copy. So they're the dudes that you want to sacrifice. They're kind of the ones that make this whole build work. You've got your crag hounds. Um, you know, they can attack twice if they have, the enemies they're fighting have less power. Upgrading these is really good. You have Karim Fellspeaker. When a minion is sacrificed, gain one power. So you're going to be trying to sacrifice so that they become a 2-4, 3-4, etc. Cragbuster, when this minion dies, it knocks two units back. Okay, I don't particularly value this unit, but I don't quite understand it either. Faceless Initiate, range two. This is our ranged unit. Minions destroyed by this minion count as sacrificed. Okay. And so that will count towards the Fell Speaker's increase in power. And you have to sacrifice an adjacent friendly minion and summon a meek servitor. So I was able to... You basically, you drop this guy, then you drop this guy, and then you get like a... Uh, some sort of golem type creature. Alright, and we'll try it. And I got a lot of gold for that run, so I'm getting closer to unlocking the mage. We'll be half Dan the Death Walker. And wish me luck. Going in on the goblin. First few battles should be very easy. Let's redraw the javelin. And we get a crag hound. Okay. So what I can do go ranged. Get that predator there. So his whole thing is, he doubles his damage whenever he attacks someone that has less attack than him. Alright, that's not going to work for that guy. Let's go there. Move here and attack there. Move our ranged guys over to here. We'll step our hero up. I kind of just want to surround him. So his ability right now, give all your units plus O plus 2. He's not going to be able to do anything with that. He'll just be able to buff himself. Kind of like a heal. And then to really mess him up, we'll give this guy block so he can't get out of this this turn. Um, so here we can sacrifice. Sure. We get a copy, and we get the, the Meek Servitor. So it's considered a summon. So it's summoning, well, it's a copy is what it's considered here. In Magic the Gathering, it would be like a like a token. But it's a 3-3, three, three, and it's, it's pretty damn strong. Um, when you upgrade this character, you get a stronger version of the Servitor. So what I want to do here is attack here. I'm going to step back. I don't like that I don't get to pick who gets sacrificed, though. Because I would not have chosen that. Hmm. Make sure we attack with everyone. 
But this is obviously just going to be an easy fight. Would have been nice to sacrifice him. And we'll finish him there with the javelin. So yeah, we need to consider that. That we don't have any actual control over what we sacrifice. I'll take a potion. Get an early potion. See what kind of minions we could get. Holy crap. I haven't seen this one yet. It's a 6-6. Six, six, an arch fiend. When summoned, raise two. Oh, you have to exhaust cards. And when a minion is sacrificed, gain plus one, plus one. Holy crap. Uh, we've got some flare stones here. I'm going to use one on this new spell. I've never seen this before. Honor duel. Choose a friendly minion. It attacks each adjacent enemy minion. And then they attack it back. I'll take that as well. And we'll try out this new minion. I'm not going to use all of my stones there. Let's go to the blacksmith and see if we can upgrade that powerful card we just picked up. Oh, wait. Is that already like a tier 3 card? Let me look at my deck. No, it's not. But I can't upgrade it. Okay. At least I don't I don't see it here. No, I can't upgrade it. Interesting. All right. Well, let's see what the upgrades turn into. That's only one extra attack. This thing becomes much stronger as a 2-3. And it even gets another knockback. So it goes from being absolutely useless, in my opinion. This thing becomes much better because it wants to attack uh, twice whenever it has something less power. So giving it more power makes it more likely that you get the double strike effect uh, that you want. And this just makes them two threes. Yeah, it doesn't have any any other special effect. Okay, I am going to... This starts them off as a 1-5. And they gain power of two. That's way stronger. I'm going to start with this thing. And then next we'll probably go for the Fell Speakers. And if we get any treasures, we can always come back and see about upgrading them. So once we get to the harder stuff, I'm going to start scoping out their deck... Uh, beforehand. Yeah, we'll keep all here. Hmm. So they have... This has dash. But you still have summoning sick. So it's not like the same as haste. Let's sacrifice this thing and get a servitor. It knocked us back. That doesn't damage us or anything like that. Okay. Gotta get used to the rhythm of this character. That's a 1-4. Okay, we have a dagger throw. Deal one damage to two different enemy targets within range. Range of two. And they always seem to target my hero whenever they do stuff like that. This thing is dead because our Hound will be able to double strike it. So let's put him here. That way he doesn't get hit by this dagger next turn. Okay, and we'll attack there. Move here. And by staying, you know, kind of catty corner from him, uh, we really affect who he can attack. So yeah, he's only going to be able to hit this one guy. So if I'm understanding this all correctly, this should do 6 damage to him. And it did indeed. Let's see how this works. Choose a friendly minion. They attack everything. It looks like they attack first. Yes. So potentially, that's an amazing card. You taunt everything, you fight it all, you probably kill a bunch of stuff if you're doing it on, like, let's say our 6-6. Six, six. It'll kill everything around it, and they won't even get a chance to attack back. That's what I'm asking myself, whether or not they get a chance to attack back. Oh, this is awesome. Can perform an attack diagonally, we want that. Another one of those, though? Okay. 
Yeah, so what I'm asking myself, let me finish my train of thought. If if I am I first striking them essentially, am I am I attacking them? The way it reads is I'm attacking them first. I'll kill them and then they won't even get a chance to attack me back. But if in practice I use it, I attack everyone, and they get this weird like little moment where they get to attack me back before they die, that's totally different. Okay, I want both of these. What does this do? Target an adjacent friendly minion for sacrifice. Oh, so I get to target. That's important. Deal two damage to the enemy hero. Ooh, but it's a zero six. I can't see the upgrade. I guess maybe you have to actually know what it is to unlock it. Let's unlock this potion here. Apply three power to your... Uh, wait. Apply three power to a unit you control consume. Okay. I'm going to take all of this. I'm not going to use the last one. We're going to confirm. And I'm going to take the plus four HP. We haven't taken any damage yet, so to heal right now wouldn't do much for us. Uh, dash is okay. But I don't... We don't have a ranged weapon yet. In fact, we just picked up a, another melee weapon with an increased power and the ability to attack diagonally, which will keep us safe. I think that's that's insane. That's a that's got to be a great pickup. There's a floating hooded figure in the room you enter. As it speaks, you hear it not with your ears but with your mind. You have had many experiences. I would partake. You will be duly compensated. We lose two HP and a little bit of experience. Choose one level three card. I don't know how we could lose experience because we're at zero on level two. A greater axe, three damage and cleave, a rampaging fell beast, a five six. At the end of each turn, raise one. Exhaust cards from the top. Oh, so this just starts eating our deck away. And then this is a chained hell fiend, a five four. Gain the power of anything this unit destroys. Holy crap! Give me that. Wow. Yeah, we didn't lose any experience. All we lost was two HP for that, which is nothing. This is going swimmingly, guys. Don't need those. Yeah, this is terrible. And, uh, I mean... I don't need to consume this. Give our boy some block or something. He could step down and go boom, boom, and then they attack me. Might as well use the block. Yeah. Yep, exactly. Okay. So, I'm happy I'm starting to, like, understand this game. On a lot of different levels. I'm curious if he attacks twice, will that, like, do the block? Let's see. Yeah. So, it's like a double strike. It functions exactly like a double strike. Yep. Yep. Did it again. That's a beautiful combo. I'm glad we upgraded this guy. Uh, but he definitely took damage there. So they do get to attack before they die. That's good to know. We're going to move up here. This unit is going to be hard to use. And I don't want to sacrifice anything. So I'm going to put him next to the hero. Presumably the game's not so terrible that it forces me to do that. And this is just like an onboard effect that I can use. Not necessarily something that I have to use. Okay, let's attack here. Before anything else. Get everybody on board. And I'm going to sacrifice this guy because he's absolutely useless. Deal two damage there. He gets stronger. Okay, everyone attacked. Sure. This is an incredibly powerful unit, though. Hmm. Let's attack here. Move up one.
throw the big boy down. Attack there, sacrifice here. Wait, why did he not come back? I'm not sure why he didn't come back. My mistake, though. So, I should have played this guy first. He would be a 7-7 seven, seven right now. And I'd be happy to sacrifice the demon lady. Yeah, once again, I should have played this guy first. Damn it, I keep making that mistake. It's all good. It's all good. Whenever it's the first time I play with a card, I don't feel particularly bad. So I raised two cards. They're just not in the deck anymore. It's acting like I still have an action that I can take, but I don't... Oh, she can move. Right. Ah, they hit my hero. Probably should have left him uh, in a different spot. But this guy is super dead. So we gotta be careful how we raise our deck. Oh, actually we did go backwards and... I just noticed that. We are level 1 again. Oh, that sucks. So this is an upgraded assassin. And another one of these guys, just not level 3. We'll take him. Yeah, let's take them both. And let's open a spell, too. Deal your power as damage to all units in a line from your hero, starting with... To all units. Starting with an adjacent unit. We'll take them all. So, yeah, we did lose a level. But we still have the bonus HP. Very strange. That might be a bug, because if I level again, do I get to pick another talent? That seems a little sketchy. Seems perhaps a little too powerful, if that were to be the case. And we'll keep all these guys. Okay, so this guy's got range. Need to be careful about what we put where. And a bunch of these little uh, goblin boys are going to come down next turn. Yeah, figured that was going to happen. Could have kept him even further back. But I felt like someone was going to get attacked there. You know what? This is, We got a cool move here. Let's, let's not mess this up. Let's uh, block here and see if this works. Okay, and they dealt damage. Their last word is they deal two damage to adjacent units. Yeah, let's go here. And we'll raise the next two cards. Good. Didn't want those anyway. It feels like a benefit if you just don't get... Hmm. What does this do? Yeah, they don't have any minions on the board, so we don't have to worry about them all exploding. We killed them all in the first move. Go here. Six damage, and then we get out of the way. See how I use this. Deal your power as damage to all units in a line. So we use it there. So three damage there. Just wanted to see how that card worked. I knew we had the kill, obviously, on board. Alright, new treasure. It's a spell. Add a card from your discard pile to your hand. That's cool. Could potentially go and sell that. And another new minion in Fest. Spawn a Cragworm when... The damaged minion dies. Oh, that's super strong. And another new card. Karim Void Caller. Raised cards are instead added to your hand. This is what we need. I didn't know there was such a thing. Confirm. And we are getting an extra level. 
That is probably a bug and not a feature. You know what I'm saying? Like, we just got two talents at the first level. If that's supposed to work that way, then bless me, I suppose. So we have the opportunity to get rid of some stuff, and I think we should definitely do that. I'm tempted to get rid of this Life Conduit level 2 card. Um, I don't know how smart that is, though. The rest of our stuff feels really strong. I'm, I'm not really feeling this Crag Buster guy. He's definitely just there to sacrifice. But we've got some sort of, like, uh, raise synergy going here with really big minions. I'm also tempted to get rid of this level 1 Faceless Initiate. Let's get rid of him. And then if I'm going to trade in a treasure, it'll probably be this Ornate Spade. Trade that in and get another upgrade. Let's see what's up. Like this guy, for instance. He becomes a 4-3. Just much stronger card. I don't know if we'll ever get him to level 3 though. Alright, and let's go down here and unlock one of the gates. So whenever I got as far as I did into the level 3 place, um, or the third tier of the dungeon, I had gone down the dark path. And took a lot of fights. Okay, what does this guy do? I don't recognize him. He's got hounds. Gain the power of anything they destroy. And no range, nothing like that. And he got dash, so he's got extra attacks. Okay, let's fight him. So we just want to avoid letting his dogs kill stuff. And we're not exactly... I'll keep these guys. It's nice to have them on board in case we get some sacrifices. Uh, but these units are... Stronger than me. So we're going to have to watch how they come down this turn. Alright, so we've got some good stuff we can do here. Yeah. Boom. Yeah, I like this. So, we lose two guys we don't really care about. I'm going to move down here. I'm going to toss this to get one of my mana back so that I can draw more next turn. Move up here. Yeah, I don't think they can do anything. Let's just get more cards for next turn. Okay. I don't much care that they did that. That was their whole turn. Okay, that sucks. This guy has, uh, haste. That's a little better. You know what? And this is kind of where the extra bit of, like, understanding comes in. We want to make sure we sacrifice after we already get value from attacking. Do that there. Move up here. I'll stay there. I want to sacrifice this guy. Cool. And then I'm going to attack with this dude here. I hope that doesn't count towards his getting buffed. It did. Damn, that sucks. But then I can come here. And kill him. I mean, that was a pretty damn good turn. It's just we've opened ourselves up to take damage from him. Uh, we have our healing potion, which we might just use. Minions just are always kind of seemingly out of position. Not what I meant to do. Let's, um... Sacrifice this guy. Of course, that doesn't 
that doesn't work. That's okay. We can do some of this. Yeah, not being able to target who and what I sacrifice. Really a big drawback on this card. Okay, happy he didn't attack our hero. Man. Okay, they're boxing me into a little bit of a corner. Instead, we'll box him into a corner. We probably had to kill this turn, I'm noticing. He'll be able to summon one unit. And we heal for two. We used our potion in that battle, but it's not a big deal. We get another level. I don't want that. I still think this guy is great. Start each encounter with two invade, two evasion rather. Whenever a minion adjacent to your hero is destroyed, your hero gains one power until the end of your turn. I like getting this evasion. Comes in handy quite often. We've got a lieutenant and a psycho. Let's go do the random event. Take a gift. A priest of the god king of Karim gestures to you, gestures to you from a side passage. A gift from the king. After all, we're in this together. Are we not three Karim minions? So a fully upgraded life conduit, it deals 3 damage this time. An upgraded demonologist, so a better version of the one we have. And a Karim Hedge Wizard, which is new for me. When summoned, sacrifice a random other friendly minion and draw one card. That's a little scary. I don't get to choose, they all just get added. I don't hate that though. Let's go fight this orc lieutenant. Man, I'm, I've been getting like some really janky uh, like scam calls and emails lately. Yeah. Such a, it's such a horrible thing. I wish, I wish someone would be able to do something about that. I got two scam calls, two scam emails, and a scam text message all in one day. We're going to redraw those two. I don't want those uh, those one-two guys unless I have the big six-sixes that I can play. This is going to be tough. Because we didn't draw particularly well. I'm going to play him here as just a one-three. And we're going to give block in case this guy is able to attack. And he is. Boom. Okay. He took one damage still, but I think that was the right call. Alright, this is an easy kill for all of us, really. It doesn't matter who gets the kill. Um, We'll move here. Move here, move here, and then I'll sacrifice this guy in the back, making him a 7-7. Seven, seven. What does this guy do again? At the end of each turn, heal adjacent friendly units for 3. That's pretty strong. Alright, he's going to eat this dude next turn. And this is infest. Let's eat here, so we can grow stronger. Get the minions fighting. We'll go over here, hit this dude for seven. And then three. Our board state is looking quite scary. Well, this this is it. You know, sometimes you just don't want to overthink it. Just get the take the kill when you can. 
There's no bonus as far as I can tell from killing multiple units. A new weapon. Uh, dual scimitar or scimitars rather are quite good. This is an upgraded version of the Buster. I don't want this at all. I'm just going to skip. And go over to the Goblin Psycho. I want to draw my super high powered cards as soon as possible. Alright. these, Yeah, this is what I'm talking about. Keep, keep, keep. Okay, so this guy gets played first. And then this guy gets played second. Uh, we should probably just go ahead and drop him right there. And we get the cards into our hand instead of discarding them. And if I put this dude here, he'll have a target. One of these goblins is going to go here. He might move and then put one here and one here. You know what? Let's just, uh, oh, I don't have enough mana. I can't even play him at all. So yeah, we just discard here to get a mana back for next turn. That's a good, that's a smart play. As expected, though. It was just a matter of where on this tier he would put people. Let's get, ooh, this is actually dangerous now that I think about it. They do two damage when they die. That's fine. We'll move there and body block him. Uh, he'll he'll probably move here though. Yeah, and attack me. I've got evasion though, so I'm not that worried about it. He just got these two twos that buff them. We'll do some of that, and then that. Then I'll move. Hoping to sacrifice someone else, but that's I should have played this guy first. Dang it. These are the type of little micro mistakes you'll make if you're me. Uh, he should be a 2 5 right now, though, and that's totally my fault. And I can't get my 7 5 in, so I should have moved him up, attacked. Yeah, I made two mistakes. Two pretty rough mistakes. Um. Move down here. Let him attack whoever. We already have... We're already drawing extra cards, so it's not a big deal. And that's the kill. Okay, a little sloppy. Has not come back to bite us, though. Do not want. Do want. Wish he was an upgradable guy, though. We'll just confirm. And let's move on to this Orc Vanguard. And see what he's got going on. So he is, he has dash and knockback two. And retaliate. Okay, that was an, an ability I learned about last time I played. Um, we attack him, he attacks back. He's got range, he's got the dogs. This guy is definitely much scarier than the others. We've got a nice big board to maneuver on. Yeah, we didn't we didn't get what I was looking for there. So what I think I'm gonna do is just go ahead and sack it and get a 3-3. Three, three. And play really conservative with everything else. Yeah, I don't care about that. 
Uh, so we don't want to attack him this turn. That's the whole deal. He's on board, so we'll draw two cards, which is super powerful. And we're going to surround him with some big dudes. Oh, not enough mana, so I've got to discard. Let's get rid of that. And we could play this guy, and then he wouldn't be able to summon anything. That seems pretty damn strong. Let's do that. That's the that's the play. Oh, I can't. Oh, I'm so stupid. Okay. Oh, well, we still get a really strong dude down. It's just we don't get to draw any cards uh, this turn. And we do get to attack. It hurts me, though. I should not have done that. That was dumb. Totally forgot about Retaliate. And then we're going to lose him. All right. That was a series of dumb plays. I confused myself and then really confused myself. Finish. Finish. And he's going to give himself Retaliate again. Evasion is great. We don't want to attack him. We'll take six. The only way I would... Oh, actually, we can just kill him. I think our evasion will block it. Okay, we still took one. Yeah, let's just finish this. And we heal up for the damage that we took. No big deal. I'll take a weapon in the hopes of finding something great. Our current weapon is amazing, though. I don't know how badly I want that. Let's look at another minion. Ooh, a new one. A Skittering Scorpion. When summon raise one, we'll take him. And we'll always take weapons, I guess. There's no reason not to, as far as I know. Random event. Something good, perhaps. A circular portal with a, di with a dial standing alone in its room. It looks like there's something missing from the dial. See a monstrous creature. We'll leave. I don't have a treasure that I want to give up. Let's see if maybe we can get one from some loot. Uh, our weapon is too good. Get rid of that. We'll redraw. Okay. Alright, this guy, a goblin alchemist, may attack up to the number of squares indicated away, so it's range 2. But it's got a doom mad contraption. When this minion is destroyed, deal 10 damage to the enemy hero. Scary. After two turns, destroy this minion. When destroyed, deal 10 damage to all units on the same row and column. And then when an enemy unit moves away from or next to this mad contraption for the first time, destroy this minion, deal 5 damage to that unit. This is quite the scary dude. really just have to kill this thing. Let's see what happens here. Yep. Yeah. Does this not die? It's at minus six. We don't want to ever destroy that. We need to get this scorpion in here. I should have played this first, so we would have drawn a card. crap. Like, why was that still on the board? I don't even, I don't even understand, honestly. What does that do? I didn't even look at that card. It's my bad. We've got to kill this guy just quickly. Prevent him from placing any more garbage. Uh, damn, I didn't move. If I'd have put someone... No, we just didn't have enough resources, I don't think. The Scorpion will take care of it. I, I think we're just fine. So this is one of those fights that's just basically a mini game. What did this card do? Upgrade one random mad contraption to a super mad contraption. 
doubling its effect and giving it plus three health. So that's what they did to this. Yeah, we just had to get a powerful minion on top of him. This is a good treasure we can potentially get rid of. When you destroy a minion with this weapon, add a copy of a random warrior spell to your hand. That's, I would put this as equally as powerful as our current weapon. This is a new minion. When this minion is destroyed, deal four damage to adjacent units. Wow. Um, I'm going to probably pass on that. Black Steel Staff Sorcerer. When a minion is sacrificed, draw a Black Steel minion. This one's okay. It's definitely a sacrificing engine. We've got more of a raise build going. They're kind of like half and half, though. I'm just going to take the treasure, I think. And we desperately need uh, this, this mana. That's huge for us. And can we not go back to this event? Uh, we can only do it once. Okay. I was hoping it would still be active and we could go there. Let's fight this elite. And see what it does. This is the big guy. He's got four range damage. That's a lot. He can gain three block. Stun all enemy units in a line from your hero, starting with an adjacent enemy. And then deal one damage to all enemy units. I don't like that. I don't like anything that can bypass my strategy and just hit my hero. But he doesn't summon anything. It's just uh, him fighting us. So let's get the strongest units we can. We'll redraw those two. We could have used them to sacrifice each other. Hmm. I want to get my big boys in on this. He's going to get a bunch of block. We've got to surround him. I want to be, uh, yeah, I don't know. I think he can hit me from there. We'll see. We're using a lot of mana. He can. Man, that was the guy I wanted to keep alive, too. What did that do again? All right, it stunned him. Six damage. Blocked. We had no means of getting rid of uh, his block there. So everyone's going to take one damage now. This guy seems like he's going to be pretty tough for us to deal with. It's, only, it's basically like we're only going to be able to hit him every so often. And then infest thing doesn't really matter. Because there are no other minions. Expecting him to hit my hero, that's actually good for us. Don't like the stun, though. He's got evasion, so he's safe. Okay, let's attack here. Attack here. I'm looking at doing this to get past it. But I think we just need to wait a turn. We'll play this. And... Using this is just going to get us killed. So, like, we do six damage here and then he would attack back and kill us. I don't want to do that. Let's just end the turn. Sure, one damage to everything. Our evasion's gone, but we're fine. An attack here, move. And that's it. Thank goodness for high attack damage. And we also had the uh, the javelin in our back pocket if we needed it. Alright, so we get another treasure, a silver liquid. When the enemy plays a minion, become a copy of it. That's cool. And then the crackling sapphire is a great treasure. We'll take that as well. Look at the weapon. It's a tier 3 bow. 
cool. And a new minion. Gains plus one, plus two when a card is exhausted. So that works with rays. Now let's look at this spell. Put a copy of a friendly minion on the top of your deck. Hmm. I like that. I'm going to take all of these and confirm. A healer and a magic chest. Let's go to the healer. A quick sip just gives us 4 HP, but a greater heal we have to pay a treasure to fully restore ourselves. Let's take a quick sip. We're topped off, and we'll go up to the magic chest. Let's open it. Select an artifact to keep. We only get one. When played, lose two health. Draw one card, and this card returns to your hand. Ugh. Or target unit gains haste. While this card is not removed from the game, your hero gains leap two. Not 100% sure how that works, but let's try that one. I don't like the idea. I understand the synergy behind, like, sacrificing health to get more cards. Uh, I could see that helping you to win a fight you have no business winning. And if you can't, you just kind of sacrifice it for mana. Okay, the door opened. And now we're going south here. Random event. Pay a treasure. Choose a mage spell card. Well, I've got some treasures I can't even use. I'm going to get rid of the foreign sword, I suppose. As strong as it is. And we can add either a double loop for the next two spells you play on top of your deck. Deal two damage to a unit and additional one damage for each adjacent unit. That's powerful. Especially once we finally surround a boss. At the end of your turn, choose up to two cards in your hand to retain. I like this one. It's not upgraded either. Your senses tinkle in anticipation. In the gloom of the next room lies the boss of this floor. And beyond lies your chance to escape. Alright, Lizard Matriarch. Wish me luck, guys. But this will probably be the last fight. And this is one of those things... A pile of eggs. A, this is one of those fights where we're really going to have to... Uh, read up on what they do and try and understand... At the end of your turn, spawn two Lizardling eggs on random empty squares. May travel up to the number of squares indicated over other units in a single move. Has Elite 3, so we're not going to be able to tie this thing down. After two turns, destroy this minion and summon a Lizard Alpha. These guys have blocks, so they're super annoying. Give each friendly minion plus one plus one for each Alpha egg on the board. Ugh. Okay. We need to flood this board quickly. It's hard to want to get rid of a 4 damage spell. I kind of don't want any of these. Let's redraw. Okay. So I haven't used that ability yet, so I was able to move quite a bit. I'm a little worried about what's going to get raised. Okay, that's garbage. No, that card would have been awesome. Oh, well. We'll just do six damage here. Oh, no. And eggs are all over the board. We've got to kill them. Summon a Lizard Alpha. Damn. Make sure we sacrifice this guy. There we go. Perfect. That worked out very well. Now he can leap. We cannot corner him. So I think it's kind of a trap to feel like you don't need to prioritize killing the eggs. Because he'll just jump over us if he needs to. We can kill one of these eggs that's getting ready to hatch. Like this one. Move here. 
Yeah, I think we just try and go for some sort of kill. Because I can get like a big surround here and then play this. So this is deal 2 damage to a unit and additional 1 damage for each adjacent unit. So he'll be dead. He's completely surrounded. If I'm understanding this card correctly, and I, I think I am, I think we just have the kill right now. Wow. Six damage. And we beat the first boss. We took no damage and we, I mean, we crushed him. And we got an achievement for beating him with the, the Karim Warrior. We got a treasure, gain two random treasures and consume this trinket pouch. Okay, cool. So we just want to use this next time we see it. We're going to look at another artifact. I don't, I honestly don't want that artifact. A new minion. Willing Sacrifice. Target a friendly unit to give it plus plus one and sacrifice this unit. I like that. And then two more weapons. I'd rather try and get some strong units. And a Hungering Fell Beast. At the end of each turn, raise one. This could, I think, very quickly destroy our entire deck. We're going to go down here for Bloodlust. And then try and get... We're going to continue on and try and get um, that next mana. Getting up to five mana would be huge. Let's continue on. I'm not going to convert treasure. No, we'll cancel. And we'll just continue. As we go into level two of the dungeon. So guys, thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed today's video. Once again, my name is Brett. My channel is Good Talk Gaming. We'll be doing level two. Hopefully we make it long enough that it makes for an interesting video, but we're well on our way. Um, another level here, which is just a couple more fights, we'll have increased mana. Our chances to win will increase. We're quite strong the way we are. And I'm going to attribute that mostly to our weapon, making it so that our hero is not useless and can stay out of harm's way of most types of enemies by staying diagonal. And all of these like early powerhouse cards we've gotten you know this guy is enormous he hasn't been played too much these two are awesome i understand i guess why they can't be upgraded because i don't even know what you would upgrade them to seven sevens or like what do you even do there this i would love to upgrade and see how strong we can get this guy yeah we're in a great spot we're in a great spot for this run anyway y'all take care and as always i will see you in the next one later y'all